visiting team from Oakland usually is not welcome in Denver. But California Senator Kamala Harris is putting together a pretty good crowd tonight. Can give you a look at Manuel High School inside the gymnasium, which is not just any gymnasium. That is the Thunderdome, where a decent sized crowd has assembled to see the senator from California tonight outline her presidential campaign. Now we know this state is not Iowa or New Hampshire. So why in the world is she coming here at this crucial moment? Our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, found out it's in part about setting an example. Immediately after her rally at Manuel High School, Senator Kamala Harris will do what many do on Friday nights in Denver. She'll head to Lohi. This normally would look like our living room. There'd be, you know, sofas and chairs and... <laughs> Wanda James had to clear space to make way for a presidential candidate. Lisa and I sat down and talked and said, you know, it would be a powerful move to be able to bring her here um, and have a host committee made up mostly of women that are changing the conversation. James, the first African-American owner of a pot dispensary and former mayoral candidate Lisa Calderon are hosting a fundraiser for Harris's presidential campaign. Women of color often are the factors whether to turn an election one way or another, yet we're often overlooked in the importance of running for office ourselves. Contributions to attend the fundraiser where Harris will talk from that race spot are between $500 and $2,800. Our goal is to to help her raise $100,000 plus, introduce her to many people who may not have met her yet or had the chance to speak to her. Being in the home of one of Colorado's marijuana matriarchs is sure to put attention on Harris's position on pot. There's currently a bill in the Senate to give pot shops more flexibility in banking. Her campaign is aware of our stature in this and clearly we were a part of the bill that came out. So hopefully it, it does shine some light on uh, what cannabis entrepreneurism now also means uh, when we start talking about the election of a United States president. We're going to be working after she leaves to help support women of color running for office, give them the kind of support that I know I wish I had when I was running for office, and just build the bench. If you ever want a spotless house, Kyle, host a presidential candidate and it will get clean lickety split. We still see uh, a lot of waiting to be had here at the rally. And this is where things get nervous because I was told that Kamala Harris will be flying to Nevada tonight. Mm -hmm. And if she's late on the rally, that means she'll be late at the fundraiser and possibly that's going to condense the time. Mm -hmm. And this is real time politics. I wonder which one they'll condense the rally or the fundraiser. Marshall's too polite to answer that. All right, thank you. So you got Denver Mayor Michael Hancock. You know, he's a manual guy. And former Mayor Wellington Webb, also a proud manual Thunderbolt. Both of them are skipping the Kamala Harris rally at manual. We were like, well, well why? Why won't you go to that? Uh, Webb tells us that he thinks that Harris is a great candidate, but he's sticking with the Colorado candidates, Hickenlooper and Bennett. Hancock is in for Team Hick, but his people said he sends his respect to Senator Harris. Former Governor Hickenlooper says he does not want to run for Senate, says he is not cut out for the job. But just in case Hickenlooper decides to run for the job that he does not want and would not be good at, a political ally has reserved him some website addresses. Curtis Hubbard, a political consultant, reserved several Hickenlooper for Senate web addresses today. Hubbard swears he did this on his own and that it's not a signal that Hickenlooper is dropping his faltering presidential campaign to run against Republican Senator Cory Gardner. 17 year olds in Colorado can get a preview of politics. They can vote in primary elections now if they're going to be 18 by Election Day. That new law took effect today. There's another fresh law that could shine some light on secret campaign donations. So, you know, super PACs, those committees that produce political ads with the scary music and the unflattering images of candidates, those super PACs will have to reveal who gives them money if the check is $10,000 or more. Till today, those contributions could stay hidden. Illegal Pete's has defeated the state of Delaware. All kinds of companies incorporate in Delaware because of business friendly rules. But Delaware was not friendly to illegal Pete's. Said the name could be a derogatory reference to people in this country illegally. The restaurant owners insisted it was just like an old family nickname, a saying, and they sued over it. The state of Delaware has now backed down. Rocky Flats files that were supposed to be made public after years of secrecy are now missing. 
and the story of their disappearance is my recommended read for the day. So think back to 1989. The FBI raids the Rocky Flats nuclear weapons plant. The Westward article I'd point you toward looks at Colorado's first ever special grand jury, which was brought together to consider the evidence seized at Rocky Flats by the FBI. Westward chronicles the developments that came after that up through this year when an attorney asked that those files be unsealed only to learn that the Department of Justice says it can't find them. We have a link to that article on the next Facebook page. There is a scene in Lakewood that seems straight out of a Dr. Seuss book. The gardens at Kendrick Lake have a pair of roughly 25 foot tall plants with these big bushy bright yellow flowers. The blooms are rare and they're hard to miss. Stands out above everything here, which is really cool. Yeah, that is just amazing. Looks pretty cool. It looks like a Dr. Seuss plant almost. Not Colorado. Looks not more like Lakewood a, either. Not Lakewood. Looks more like a desert flower. You wouldn't know it just looking at these other ones that it produces something like this. I feel like it's magnificent. We don't have a lot of um, plants that get that big versus, you know, trees and such. And we had so many people asking about it. Oh, can you take my picture next to it? My name is Keely Foster. I'm with the City of Lakewood's Greenhouse Department. We are at Kendrick Lake Gardens. We're out here today because um, our century plant, the agave perii, is blooming. Century plant? Every 10 to 25 years, if it stores up enough energy, it will shoot out a stalk. If it's in a perfect location, it will shoot up a stalk that's, you know, 15, 25 feet tall. And then it will start to shoot out little bracts. Kind of makes itself known. You know, so it, 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 it kind of lets you know it's there and it doesn't really let you not notice it. It's got great definition. It pulls people into the gardens. I mean, I've had people driving along the streets that are like, I just saw this and I wanted to know what it was. I've never seen anything like that. Especially here in Colorado, they're extremely rare. I would urge people to come out here and see it. Um, it's got about maybe another two weeks of bloom time on it. We've made it our mission with our central irrigation to really cut back on our water use. So we've been trying to promote these plants. It's just, I think, a, an environment where people have a tough time keeping plants alive, but, but you can do it. And, and that's what this garden is all about, is just showing people what they can do. If you're thinking you've never seen one of those, you're probably right. Century plants are more common in New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. That said, we ran into a fifth generation Texan at the gardens, and he said he had never seen blooms like those. It's a sign that someone at the Air Force Academy is smoking something, and it's where they're smoking it that has us scratching our heads. And next for your name, Steve McDermott spotted this designated tobacco area, which is outstanding in its field, but not an outstanding place to smoke, what with fire danger and all. This is next to a guard post south of Falcon Stadium. The Air Force Academy said, yeah, yeah, there's an explanation for this. It's currently an unmanned post, so they don't expect anybody to be in the designated smoking area. If they were to staff that station again, they would reevaluate the placement of the sign. Guys, if craft beer is not popular anymore, I'm going to have to come up with something else to like in lieu of actually having a personality or hobbies. And I bring this up because tickets for the Great American Beer Festival are selling slowly for the second straight year. Tickets for the annual festival went on sale to the public Wednesday, and I checked this afternoon. Tickets are still available for all three main sessions. Remember, a few years back, GABF would sell out lightning fast. Tons of people got shut out of that event. Then they enlarged the floor, and haze bros became an obnoxious thing, and now people are drinking hard seltzer. I don't even understand that, and I'm not sure that that has anything to do with this. But anyway, GABF tickets, still available for the big fest. More beer for the rest of us, I guess. A smarter way to cross Old Town Road, or any other, is the most Colorado thing we've seen today. Massage parlors suspected of human trafficking keep operating in Colorado. Our Nine Wants to Know team asked the state what it's doing about it. We're taking swift, appropriate action. So is there anything more you could do? We definitely take swift, appropriate action. That would be our focus, is to take the swift, appropriate action. Uh, I think they're stuck on a loop. Next.
Our investigative team has been looking into illicit massage parlors. You know, the places that offer a massage and then an illegal something extra. The main issue, the more concerning thing, is that they can be involved in human trafficking. Aurora has been cracking down on these illicit massage parlors. Our 9 wants to team found that the massage parlors, they'll just move a few blocks into the city of Denver. I mean, how is that possible? Jeremy Hole will press state leaders to find out if they could be doing something to stop the cycle. And one official in particular found a fancy way to tell Jeremy they're not doing much. Good. Well, good start. Okay. Uh, if you just start with your first name and your last name real quick. Sure. Ronnie Hines. Okay. And what's your exact title here? I'm the division director for the Division of Professions and Occupations in Dora. Let's pause. Interviews with reluctant government officials who don't want to go on TV to explain themselves usually involve the following ingredients. A dull conference room and table with awkward seating, an entourage of other government communications people. This one had three lights, a reporter who just wants an authentic, honest answer. That's me. And the most of Abundant ingredient, bland sound bites to mask the bitter taste of a government problem. We have an effective, robust system where we're reviewing applications, we're looking at education and training, we're taking swift, appropriate action, um, and we're working really hard to make sure consumers um, are unduly harmed. That swift, appropriate action includes a break for the owner of Elite Spa. The city of Aurora kicked her out for hiring unlicensed masseuses. And actually, that girl, she she had half license. She she just didn't finish. She got to keep her state massage license after paying a two thousand dollar fine, making her one of thirteen thousand licensed massage therapists in the state. So, do you guys have inspectors out there in the field checking up on these people? We focus on the complaints that we get. We do have um, the ability to conduct investigations if we need to, but we really value our partnerships both with um, the public who provide us information um, as well as our sister law enforcement agencies um, that are often um, great partners in us taking swift action. No swift action here. The city of Aurora banned the owner of Massage Me because of multiple online sexual reviews about her shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea about that. Nine wants to know learned she has an active state license after getting certified yeah. through a now defunct trade school. American International Beauty College decided to shut down after the state revoked its accreditation partially for selling credentials. We found about 80 people that are currently licensed by your agency that got certificates from these defunct schools. Are you aware of that? Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I would I would have serious concerns. The owner of Massage Me passed a state-required massage test given in Spanish or English. Her employees should have licenses too. How are your employees able to get a state certificate? I have no idea. Inspectors in Aurora say it's odd how some people, despite the language gap, I have asked them, do you know where the bicep is? And they won't know. And then I'll ask them where the calf muscle is, and they won't know that. Are able to get a state license. Somehow they have a massage therapist license. That's been an issue nationwide with, with fake schools and cheating on the exam. Is it acceptable to have people out there with active licenses from schools that have been uh, revoked? I want to make sure that we're keeping all consumers safe and taking action where we appropriately can. Let's pause again. Does the body, the body massage include anything else? While undercover shops offered us sexual services, Aurora has found a way to shut them down and stop the endless cycle of human trafficking. What I'm suggesting is I think we need to have those same conversations that Aurora had, but do it as a state and look at that statewide regulation. So is there anything more you could do? We definitely take swift, appropriate action. While the state is stuck in a cycle itself. Is it acceptable though? I want to make sure that we're protecting all consumers and that's that's that would be our focus is to take the swift, appropriate action we need to. So much swift, swift appropriate, appropriate action. action. Maybe we need a little more actual action. I think investigative stories like this often shed a light on where we might want to talk about what we could do better. If you would like to see Jeremy's full three-part investigation on this, take swift appropriate action and find it on 9news.com. School's about to start up, which I guess isn't normally good news. Good news is all about perspective. It'll be nice to have, you know, the swing of things start up again. And you guys have the right outlook and a new way to safely cross traffic in Colorado. What do you think? Yay or nay? I'll show myself out next.
is a loud political rally at Manuel High School where California Senator Kamala Harris is addressing the crowd. Let's listen for a second. So this then becomes a moment to fight for the best of who we are and fight we will. And here's the thing. We're used to having this fight. We've had this fight before. We have always fought for the best of our country. It's who we are by our nature. We fight for the ideals. We fight for the promise of our country. So this is that fight, and we've had it before. And you know, I come from A bit of tonight's rally with Senator uh, Harris at Manuel. We hope to listen to a lot of the presidential candidates if they choose to bring their show to town. Um, my sister, my... Meteorologist Danielle Grant here in the backyard because it is such a beautiful Friday afternoon evening. Man, look up toward the high country. Nice and green. Nice to see some blue skies. That's going to be the place to be this weekend if you are looking for a spot to keep things cool. It's hot here in the metro area. This afternoon into this evening, still watching the monsoon flow pick up that moisture from the Gulf, swing it into the southwest and land it in our backyard. The storms have been few and far between here in the Denver area. However, you'll notice central mountains and then just to the south toward Colorado Springs and Pueblo. A lot of action with a lot of lightning too. Right now, just a few isolated showers coming through parts of Fort Collins, Long I-25 through Larimer and Weld County. Those should wind down within the next hour. Mostly clear tonight. We're down to lower 60s here in the city across the eastern plains. 40s, 50s going way up high. The rest of tonight, everything clears out and by tomorrow morning, we are back in business with the sunshine. Things are looking good by 536. Tomorrow, maybe one or two isolated storms coming through Jefferson, Douglas counties, but really the focus once again will be in the mountains and foothills. So get out and enjoy tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures are going to be warm back to the lower 90s, 90s across the eastern plains. But again, if you head to the high country, 70s and 80s should be just picture perfect. Even warmer for us on Sunday with a slight cool off early next week with a better chance for storms. The most Colorado thing we've seen today are people in Fort Collins who are on their high horse and have no need to get down anymore. And that's because the city of Fort Collins and Larimer County put in an equestrian button at the Pruder Trail crossing at Taft Hill. So no more need to dismount in order to safely cross. Just reach over or up, depending on the size of your horse, and activate the flashing crossing lights. Every Friday ends with your good news. And that's next.
We get your good news this week from a place celebrating some of its own. CU Boulder's National History Museum just got national accreditation. This is the CU Museum of Natural History. We just got AAM accredited, so that's super exciting. We're considered a medium museum, but we are pretty small. You've seen we just have a few exhibit halls. Well, this one's a archaeology kit for schools that are too far away from Boulder. I guess the good news of the day is that all my friends and family are healthy and happy. Well, we just got new coffee carafes, and they're super shiny, and there's no dents in them, so that's exciting for me. Well, it's a beautiful day. Yep, 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 yep. And school's about to start up, which I guess isn't normally good news, but it'll be nice to have, you know, the swing of things start up again. I got a bike packing trip I'm gonna be going on. I just verified it today, so that's what I'm stoked for. I get to go camping and biking at the same time. You're removed, and you don't have to think about much other than going forward. Everything that I've seen, all the people here are so kind and so generous, and really they do everything in their power to make sure that everyone has a chance to learn here. So being able to hold up to the standards of other large museums like Denver Museum of Nature Science um, is pretty exciting. John writes, your blazer is like if Iron Man was a news anchor in the 1970s. Awesome. See you next time.